morning, guys. Welcome. Pat Precord, and uh, let me welcome to the Friday morning coffee break. As you probably figured out by now, we're shooting from our live local Starbucks. It's where I spend a good portion of my time away from the office. Well, all right, a good portion of my time because I don't go to the office. I'd rather work here, and this is kind of where I get most of my stuff done. So today in the coffee break, we're going to start off a little series here. The series is going to be about um, the reincarnation of real estate investment as we know it. I mean, I'm telling you, it's 180 degrees different than it was three, four years ago, and we're going to talk a lot about that. And I think once we get through a couple sessions on this, you're going to see how what we were taught back in the day, if you will, and what some people are still teaching and preaching today, couldn't be more off base. They just don't work today. There's very foundational reasons as to why. I'm going to tell you what those are so you at least have a, a level playing field going forward. Okay? Then I'm going to talk about how the whole economy affects our investment business. Has it slowed it down? Has it changed it? Absolutely. But you know what? I'm a firm believer in that every change creates equal or greater opportunity, and this is proving to be no different. But it's important you understand how the changes affect us and how you can capitalize on the opportunity. So first let me start with this, okay? We have a foundational problem in our real estate nationwide right now. And unfortunately, the news glazes over the top of this, and they like to spend their time victimizing, creating victims of those people who are in default and being foreclosed on and blaming the big bad bank. We all know it's not exactly the way they preach it to be, but that's where they spend most of their time because that they feel is most newsworthy. Let me tell you this, and the other thing they focus on is the decrease in housing, housing value, which is important, okay? That, that's phones going off, so I'm just gonna hang this up so it doesn't interrupt the Hey, it's part of doing business, I understand that, okay? So, the other part is they focus on the decrease in housing values, and they do have a valid point there. They bring it across the wrong way. They focus on it to show you how bad everything is day by day, but they don't show you what's important for you to know about it. And it's relative, because I'll tell you right now, it's not, what's not relative to us is how much houses sell for. You may think differently, but I'm, as, you, as we go along, you're going to find that out to be true. It's not how much houses sell for, it's that they do sell. Look at it as kind of a stagnant body of water. Yeah, our levels are low, and we're okay with the levels being low. As long as the pumps are turning, the water doesn't go stagnant. You can see how that analogy relates out to our business. See, the fundamental issue that they all seem to be passing over right now is the fact that our supply and demand, the most basic rule in economics, are way out of proportion. You know, we're normal. In a normal year, we sit on about 750,000 vacant homes. It seems like a lot, but our economy can carry that. Out of all the houses, we have 750,000 to about 800,000 units that are vacant. We're normal. We're good with that. Okay? And that's houses that are vacant and in the process of being bought and sold and all that other kind of stuff. Right now, we're sitting on in excess of 3 million vacant homes. So it was a normal supply and demand, one that worked very well, okay, it's now like this, okay? It's completely out of balance. And the rules of economics state that if the supply and demand are that upset, well, guess what? We are not gonna have a stable buying economy here. And until we reach a bottom in our real estate prices, it doesn't matter what that bottom is. It doesn't. Until we reach a bottom, this will not change. There will be no confidence in the buyer side of it, therefore buyers aren't going to be eager to buy. There's going to be no confidence in the lending side of it. Lenders are not going to be eager to lend on a property that may indeed lose value and they become unsecured even more going forward. But the moment, the moment this stops and our supply and demand comes back in order and this bottom has been reached, okay? Buyers are going to start stepping up, they're going to feel the confidence of buying because now they're at the best prices available to them and the lenders are going to be confident lending because they know they're secured. There's only one way it's going from here and that's back up. There's historical curves that predict this stuff and they're comfortable with that. But until that happens, we've got this stale body of water. Now, the big question, the golden question here is, what does it take to get this facilitated, get it going? You hear a lot about government bailouts, you hear a lot about Wall Street bailouts, you hear a lot about um, bailing out the car manufacturers, you know, the guy doesn't have enough fuel to get to get in his jet and fly to the big meeting, so we got to bail him out and get his big bonus. We all know that's ridiculous, all right? We don't have to even start arguing the validity of that right now. But what about this? Where are some monies for this? I'm going to tell you right now, you don't hear about it because it's not that flashy, it's not that exciting, but there are monies being focused on bailing out this side. Why? 
because the powers to be understand that our economy, the nation, is really driven by our real estate markets on two levels. One, that's where so much money is pumped. That's where so much money is moving. And number two, it has a lot to do with people's perception of what's going on. And we all know, and this has been proven, that perception becomes reality. Long before this economy was in a recession, people's minds were in a recession because their perception had been guided that way by our mass media. Sure enough, they followed it. It is what it is. Now we are in a recession, okay? And our minds are there too. But that can change. That can change the moment people's perception changes. And that will change the moment this market hits bottom. It'll hit bottom the moment we balance out our supply and demand curve. I'm going through this slowly so you see how fundamental this is. What does it take to do that? Well, I'll tell you what it doesn't take. It doesn't take you lending me $700,000 so I can buy a new home and vacate the one I'm in. Therefore, there's not a lot of money to do that. People don't want to lend to me even though I have a great FICO score and I have verifiable employment and I can show that I can pay and I do pay my bills. They don't want to lend to me today. Why? Because I vacate a home in order to buy a home. That doesn't, make, that doesn't do anything for our inventories, does it? What does change our inventories is bringing this guy over here, a new buyer in the arena. He's not vacating a home, okay? He doesn't own a home right now. If we bring him in here, that's one less vacancy today. One less home that's upsetting our scales. The scales are slowly coming back into alignment. Great, that's understood. So what do we do now? We make a push, a drive to bring new home buyers in the arena. How do we do that? Well, the government's stepped up with a very, very um, exciting tax incentive for our buyers. They've got all sorts of monies that are administered at the federal level and at the local state level in forms of grants, in forms of low and no interest pay, um, loans to them, down payment assistance where they'll pay your entire 20% down and then they'll put that on the end of your mortgage as a no payment, no interest loan. They have interest rate buy down programs where your, I mean our interest rates are low right now, they're 5%. But they'll buy them down to 2.7% for a new buyer to come in the arena. They're making a huge push to get new buyers into the buying cycle as it stands today. That, my friends, guys and gals, is the ultimate solution to our economy right now. Okay? You can pump money into GM, you can pump money into Chrysler and Ford, and guess what? There's nowhere near the money they need to survive. They're going to fail anyways. They should be allowed to crash and burn today, let a very entrepreneurial, uh, spirited, well-funded company come up and run them the way they should have been run to begin with. Okay, That's a fix there. I give this analogy of the hunter and the deer. I'll make it quick because we're running out of time here. Okay, You know what? If you're hunting, and I'm not a hunter, but I can appreciate this, you want a nice clean shot on that deer you want. Little or no pain, no suffering. The inevitable is the same. You're going to kill the deer, but you're going you're to take back all the good meat and everything back out of it. Okay, that's nothing wrong with that. That's a cycle. But if you miss that shot, you hit his hindquarters, he runs off. He suffers. He eventually bleeds out and dies. Okay, you prolong the inevitable. He's still going to die, but there's nothing good left out of it. You drain the deer. He suffered through the process, and there's nothing you can save out of it. That's what our bailout is doing. For our housing right now, we're doing for the the car manufacturers, we're doing for Wall Street. Some of this stuff has got to get allowed just to lie down and die. There's a lot of perpetration of wrongness that's been done. And we've got to let it through. But taking us back to our real estate businesses, understand, okay? Understand that supply and demand are critical. Okay, we got to get them back in order. I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to leave you with this. Okay, that means your business should be focused on one buyer and one buyer only, one type of house, one type of loan. And I told you at the beginning of this, okay, that we've done it backwards. We've started with the house and ended up with finding money. It's time to start where the money is, find the buyer, then find the house. And that's where I'm going to pick up next time, guys and gals. Thank you very much. This is Pat Freeport and Friday Coffee Break.